as I say, my, my concern about children in mediation um, leads me to thinking a bit harder about one lawyer, two clients, because I think it might be a possible first step on the way out of the current impasse we've got ourselves into, where since LASPO, we have no legal aid for legal help in private law. We have public funding only for mediation and then only for people whose other, uh, where the other party is willing to participate. Um, we've got many mediators who are lawyers and we've got many people wanting legal advice. And we've got lawyers sitting there, um, lawyer mediators, uh, not being allowed to give the advice which people in front of them are asking for. So I think we could probably do a bit better than that if we've got extremely limited funds to help these families. And as I say, my focus is always on um, the legal aid end of things. I and I think we ought to be able to do a little bit better to provide everything that's needed in one place, at one time, and on one account, one bill. And, and I keep being reminded that legal advice is not a reserved activity. Legal Services Act 2007, there's nothing to prevent uh, a mediator who is a qualified lawyer giving advice except for the self-denying ordinances in the various codes of practice. And I think all of the recent studies that have been done, even the MOJ <coughs> varying paths to justice study, which uh, is it said loud and clear that what the people they were uh, talking to um, uh, who had experienced divorce wanted was clear advice from somebody they could rely on. Um, there's also actually nothing to prevent a solicitor giving a joint advice to both parties where both parties understand the situation and there is a substantially common interest um, which they share. Um, SRA handbook um, and the welfare of their children seems to me to be a very clear example of a uh, a common um, interest. Is there a way in which we could um, get mediators with legal experience and accreditation uh, to be able to offer legal advice with mediation, with screening, with full explanation if um, clients wanted it? And I'm not in any way saying only lawyers should mediate. Uh, what we suggested in the book was that um, if, if, if there could be a bit of an uplift in the legal grounding in some mediation forms of training, uh, at the same time that the lawyer mediators are doing their full and proper mediation training, and I, I, I have the feeling that it might be possible to have a bit more of the useful bits uh, in uh, training for non-lawyer mediators and balance it possibly with more um, mediation, specific mediation training for the lawyer mediators. Uh, and just so that uh, where people want it, that that's not forbidden. They do it in Holland. I can't say it, but I can show it to you. <laughs> it's known as VFAS, VFAS, I should say. And uh, they have um, a scheme whereby family lawyers of five years standing who are fully trained mediators can be approached to offer mediation with legal advice to people who uh, understand what they're being offered, want, they both want it, um, they've been screened in the way that anybody would be screened for mediation, for violence issues or power imbalance or whatever, and uh, it seems to worked very well. If at any point things break down, then you go back to um, some form of separate representation, but it just seems to me to be worth a try.